uh, tell me how you got into comics. What drew you to to it as a as a reader, and then later on later on as an artist and writer? Um, well, I'm not sure the term you call it. See, in America, the term they call it is different. But in so in America, I believe they're called drug stores. But in Australia, we called them news agents. So they're basically places where you go, you buy all your newspapers, magazines, junk food, some some crap like that. And uh, they used to have comics there as well. Used to. Uh, and that's where I picked up my first comics. Then uh, when I was a teenager, I realized there's a whole shop in the center of the city of Perth, where I grew up, uh, that sells comics, which was like amazing to me because uh, <laughs> you couldn't get them very easily. Uh, when you're when you're younger, you just get random issues of, of various things that were lucky to turn up, maybe. So a whole comic store is like, oh, I could actually get specific things and find them out. So I got into them that way. Uh, and I always liked to draw. So I was like, oh, you can tell stories that way. That's good. Um, yeah, and that's how I got into liking comics. Um, if you mean like career-wise, like how did I get become a professional? Is that what you mean more? Well, Eventually, but you know, early on. Oh, okay. Because you mentioned this is like an entire retrospective. I've got to take this more seriously. (laughs) I can tell you when I was a boy, we didn't use paper. We used the comics used stone. Um, um, yeah, I just got liking. You know, uh, started reading a bit of Conan, Conan from Marvel. Uh, The Incredible Hulk was the big one. I got very, very lucky. I think in that at least for my generation, the first comics I picked up um, of any of the mainstream superhero titles, which was the thing, uh, like Superman, Batman, not Superman, uh, Spider-Man, Batman, the Hulk. So the Hulk had, uh, my first exposure to the Hulk was Todd McFarlane, who is or went on to be the biggest comic artist for several generations, pretty much. Kind of still is. Um X-Men with Jim Lee. Well, a little bit before X, uh, Jim Lee, X-Men, tiny bit. Um, uh, Spider-Man was Eric Larson, who also went on to, you know, form, help form Image Comics. So I got treated to all of these amazing artists. I thought all comics were like that. Only later did I realize they were the pinnacle of, and the superstars that went on to do other things. Um, yeah, but I, I figured like, oh, and well, then I discovered a little bit later on, the work of a guy called Ashley Wood uh, in a local comic, a very professionally produced local comic. When I say local, I mean Australian, uh, which was extremely rare at the time um, because printing costs money and, uh, you know, there's not many of of us in Australia. So someone had done one. I I found it. And this guy, was his work was amazing. I'm like, holy shit. And this guy's Australian. And then I found out he actually lives in my city. And then I found out, I know a guy who's really good friends with him and he would tell me all about him and stuff. And then, and then Ashley Wood broke into the American market. He started working for Marvel a little bit. Um, so I realized, holy shit, if, if that guy can do that, then there's hope for me because Perth is a thousand, more than a thousand, uh, more than a thousand miles from anywhere in the world. It's like the most, it's apparently technically the most isolated capital city in the world. And it's one city in a state bigger than Alaska. So it's five hours by plane to the next uh, decent sized city. So we don't get out much. And if we do, we stay away. It probably explains why I live in America now. Um, yeah. So I kept trying because I knew Ashley, I loved Ashley Wood's work. Uh, and I knew that he, he had some success and you could, if you could do it from Perth, you could do it from anywhere. So it gave me hope. So uh, yeah, that's leading into how do I, did I get into comics? So I don't know if you yeah, want me to just keep going. Let's, let's, let's talk about that. Yeah. When did you decide that you, this is something that you wanted to pursue professionally? I don't know. I just, it's always like, that's like asking like, so like certain careers or jobs, you just have it within you and it's always been there. And then some, you make a choice because it's like, Oh, well that gives me great benefits and lots of money or something like that. But uh, I don't know. It it chose me. I didn't choose it. I'm a slave to doing art and um, wanting to tell stories. So I, I just don't know when when that started. I always liked it. So I was like, oh, I if I if there's a chance to make a living at this, I should probably aim higher. So 
I kept trying to, you know, train and, and study. And uh, uh, back in the, I guess it was the 90, late 90s, I guess it was, uh, things called message, for, message boards, things like that were huge. And the comics community was always online very early on. So I got chatting to people and because there's not many locally and, um, you know, showing artwork and stuff. And so there's lots of groups doing that. And eventually I got a little bit of notice from someone who worked for Todd McFarlane and uh, they asked me to try out for a book and I went from there. So I filled in for Ashley, ironically, I filled in for Ashley Wood for four pages on the last issue of a book that he left with four pages to do, which is a little weird because there's four pages. So you could do that. Um, so I did that and I did that as in his style as much as possible because I hate it when someone takes over and the art style is completely different. It's very jarring on a story. So, plus I love his art and I love his style. So, um, yeah. And then I, I ended up doing more issues of that book and uh, for Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane Productions was the name of the company. So I did a book called Hellspawn. And that's basically where I met Steve Niles, who uh, was the writer I ended up working with on 30 Days. And we did that because getting the approval process going on the Hellspawn got slower and slower. So we were left with weeks to months waiting around. So we figured, let's do another comic in the meantime. And here's a list of whole pictures and ideas to choose from. But what would you like to do? And I chose one that was called 30 Days a Night. And uh, we did the book. Didn't sell any, didn't really sell any copies, didn't really make its money back. But then it got a movie deal and then everyone wanted to buy it. And uh, I got a career because people suddenly knew who I was on my, I'm going to call it my technically first completed comic because it was the first, it was only three issues, but the first story that had an end. So you could read the whole thing. Done. It was good. So I had actually completed it. So yeah, and I've never looked back since. Well, I have, but not bad, not terribly badly. So, so that's so, how I got into comics through a movie deal, which is not the way I recommend people generally try to get into comics, but um, or as a career anyway. I mean, if I hadn't had that, maybe I would have done those couple of few issues of Hellspawn, and then that would have been it. I don't know. I don't know because I'm I was way down in Australia. You know, you might get a phone call, an international phone call, if you're lucky, every now and again, and uh, it's hard to network or know anyone that way. So, yeah.